All right, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday. It is the Earth Master out here, last day of May. May 31st, 2024, about 9.21 a.m. here, California time. Latest activity shows a 6.2 earthquake into the Kermadec Trench and also a 6.3 earthquake back here into the Southwest Indian Ridge. A lot of movement taking place out here in the last half hour or so. Looks like it all started off here with a five-pointer around the Loyalty Islands area, southeast of the Loyalty Islands, south of Vanuatu region. Uh, so following that earthquake, that's when we've seen a 6.3 stir up here at about 8.46 local time here, California time. And then 10 minutes later, a 6.2 stirring up out here across the Kermadec Trench, those uh, seismograph station waves. I did see him come in here. There's the uh, New Zealand station picking up on that six-pointer along the Kermadec Trench. And uh, looks like we're quite active out here for a Friday. Goodness. Have to keep an eye on things here around the, uh, the globe. I was checking this out earlier prior to all this earthquake activity, and I was thinking to myself, goodness, there's not much to chat about here on this Friday, but it uh, looks like things are set into motion here in terms of uh, larger-scale potential. Two six-pointers in about 10 minutes of each other here today so could be an interesting day we do have a uh, space weather activity headed this way in terms of potential auroras tonight we'll look at that here in just a little bit uh, this area down here in new zealand has been seeing some deeper activity out here recently let me pull up the last seven days while well, the kermadec trench here uh, but the usgs really not showing that in terms of the smaller quake activity I was looking for. But either way, if you look at the map, a lot of deep activity with some surface adjustment going on up here around the Tonga Trench recently. Uh, a couple videos back, I did say to watch for migration here because we are, uh, you know, still seeing some deeper movement quakes inland into the subduction zone with not a whole lot of surface adjustment upstream. But we finally hit that level uh, today. I believe last night this area did see a deeper quake as well, but I'm not going to pull up hundreds of earthquakes on the globe. But uh, we have been seeing a lot of deeper activity out here into the Kermadec Trench underneath the area, into the subduction zone. So uh, things are definitely getting into play here across this area. And, of course, we got this big one over here, 6.3. This area can see some bigger earthquakes. Uh, it is on the, well... I just checked this a second ago, and I thought it said the John Harrison Ridge, but uh, it looks like it's on the Bob Fisher Ridge. So a bunch of ridges down here, a bunch of fracture zones, oceanic spreading seafloor center. That's why it looks like a, a zipper pattern out here. That uh, is a sign of some new oceanic crust being formed over time. And uh, a decent-sized earthquake. No tsunami with this earthquake. We'll double-check that and see what it looks like. Nothing showing up here on the USGS map far as the tsunami warning center nothing going on with that as well so getting back to the earthquake activity down here uh, if we pull up the historical map here we can see that this is uh, definitely an active area in terms of seeing uh, some six pointers out here i don't think it gets much bigger than that maybe some upper six pointers but the design out here these spreading seafloor centers don't really fracture uh, unless it's in a big way. I don't know. I, we haven't seen a big, huge opening up here in uh, mankind's history, I don't think. Maybe a long time ago. But uh, historical records, slowly over time, these things tend to uh, create new seafloor and uh, produce these earthquakes of up to, I, I think they're up in the upper sixes, but I don't think it gets any bigger than that down here. All right, so what else we got? Aside from uh, decent earthquake activity here south of the equator, up north, west coast area, California, not a whole lot going on out here today. If we look at the 2.5 map and above, well, that uh, removes pretty much all the earthquakes. No further earthquake activity in South Dakota for now, that 3.7, the lone earthquake from yesterday. Oil fields out there in Texas look a little bit quieter today. Uh, some movement this morning, but really not lighten up like it had been nothing going on across the eastern portion of the country and uh, it does look like we did see some movement down into the south sandwich islands area the subduction zone down here the southern end 
Uh, over the past 30 days, most of the activity has been up north here in a cluster. Looks like uh, we're starting to work our way down here into the southern end uh, where we did see, you know, there's a five pointer and a 4.7, but there's been more activity northward along that subduction zone than there has been southward. But it looks like that's getting some adjustment going on here now. Remember, folks, when everything starts to move like this here, uh, that, that could be a good indicator of seeing some larger quake activity in certain regions. Now, you move one piece of the puzzle, it looks as though that 5.6 here this morning stirred up a trail of events back behind it. It may seem impossible thousands of miles away that an earthquake would make some adjustment uh, enough to create larger quake activity out here, but it does. I mean, the general plate stress activity out here shows the general movement a lot of arrows pointing different directions here uh, but that's the general gps displacement that's picked up in terms of plate movement and plate motion uh, a length of a line here equals about five centimeters a year in this respect less here in the shorter arrows more in the longer arrows and uh, this area down south looks to be quite active out here right now. So we'll keep an eye on it. That's some broad scale adjustment going on uh, today. So things are stirring up, getting that domino effect feeling going on out here. Uh, movement across this area. Most of this movement here from today. This chat space weather activity real quick. See what's going on out here. We are expecting a G2 class storm tonight. Uh, the time frame peaks it looks like at about 18 to 2100 utc time so right now the utc time <clears throat> is 1600 so this could be maybe a dud for the north american side of the earth and potentially a nice aurora show on the opposite side there around uh europe asia area <clears throat> russia region could see some activity as well Maybe lingering into tonight. That could give us a chance there of seeing the auroras on the North American side here of the Earth. Again, around 0 to 0, 0,300, which would be later on, um, later on early this evening here. So we'll, we'll watch for that. There hasn't been any sign of it keying up yet. Uh, late last night, we've seen a little KP index up around the 4 to 5 range. Some models here looking uh, like it was a little bit more. Well, that's that's way back. That was back in May 11th. I was going to say, wait a minute, when did that kick back up? So that is our G5 class storm that kicked up there around May 11th. But, uh, yeah, not a whole lot coming in so far. We'll see it jump up here, a G2 class storm, where it will kick up things a little bit higher here's the chart i was looking for uh kp index of it looks like maybe kp index of five was reached earlier uh last night sometime uh, so we continue to watch that again it's expected here could be coming up anytime hopefully it will extend into the evening hours right now the aurora is not looking too hot in terms of viewing the expected view line, uh, what folks are looking for, tonight's Aurora forecast right here. There's a view line. Not going to be a huge historic event. We see G2 class storms pretty much on a regular occasion. But uh, Washington, maybe portions of northern Oregon down into South Dakota, maybe Nebraska. I don't know. This is the view line right here. This is going to be the overhead you just got to look up here. This is going to be the view line to where you have to look on the northern horizon. So not a huge event, but I'm sure a decent show here across Canada, Alaska, and potentially the northern tier states. We'll keep an eye on that for sure. Uh, not a whole lot of flaring has happened here since our large long-duration X flare, the culprit of the potential auroras tonight. Did see uh, you know a little bit of sea flare activity popping, popping popping here in the last 24 hours and of course we still got 3697 here looking quite uh dynamic at least there on the visual perspective let's check the magnetogram imagery and still got a little bit of popcorn cores here indicating some 
magnetic complexity within that core. We'll continue to keep an eye on it. It has produced two X flares now since it has peaked back over across the southeastern limb. And then the last time it was out here, after a full trip around the far side, it produced many X flares. And of course, the historic Aurora event that we've seen earlier uh, back in May or back in this month. This sunspot here, look at it, further degrading activity. You can spot this. I spotted it last night. Not a whole lot of hope here for this sunspot. Looks like it wants to say goodbye without, it wants to say goodbye while it's center stage. So we'll see what happens. Our main culprit right now producing any sizable flares is going to be this one right here. Former sunspot 3664 renamed to 3697. Our current flare level threat remains elevated at about 35% chance for an X flare, M flare at 75, C flare around 99% certainty. Quick glance here at the Storm Prediction Center in terms of severe weather. Well, got a handful of severe weather locations out here with a minimal tornado activity, just a 2% across those green shaded areas. Wind and some large hail looks to be the culprit for severe weather out here today. Uh, the current day two look for Saturday shows that severe weather lingering around the western Texas up in the Colorado area. Wind and hail threats appear to be the main threats there for tomorrow. All right, folks, we'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later unless something major happens. But for now, quite a bit of earthquake activity ramping up in a short amount of time. South of the equator, a distance apart, but closely related, right? These plates are hugged up against each other. You move one portion of the puzzle and it adjusts the entire jigsaw puzzle, so to speak, out here. So we'll keep an eye on things today and see how it goes. Have a good day. Enjoy this Friday. It's going to be 100 degrees out here in Northern California, so I think I'm going to be inside all day or in the pool. Have a good one. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later.